Hello, cutie patooties. How are you all doing? I hope I'm in the center of this video. I never know where I am or what I'm doing, to be completely honest. Um, but I think that's a metaphor for my life. I'm just kidding. I'm feeling a lot better this week. Every week that I get closer to moving back to Spain, I feel more alive and I'm very excited to start my new life. So yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to. And, you know, I I talked about it a few weeks ago. I've had a really like difficult time of my life recently. And I'm a big believer of the saying, wherever you go, there you are, which means it doesn't really matter what your environment is. You are always going to be <laughs> kind of not the same, but like, you know, wherever you go, you are bringing yourself there as well, along with all of your problems and all of your, you know, stuff. So I don't think that moving countries is going to magically, you know, solve all my problems. However, I do think I need a change of environment in order to feel aligned with the lifestyle that I want for myself and that I know is right for me because I lived in Spain for five years. And when I was living there, I felt aligned with my higher purpose, my goals, and just my energy, you know? So I understand that, like, moving back to Spain isn't going to majestically solve all my problems, but I am very excited to have a fresh start, to move to a new city. And something else that I wanted to briefly talk about before we get into, day, into today's topic I'm already getting tongue-tied. Sorry, I'm just turning my AC higher because it is hot. Um, give me one second. Okay, that should do it. Is it on the right? Is it on cold? Cold or is it? Yeah. So basically, uh, what was I talking about? Yes, I'm very, I'm getting very excited about moving to Alicante because I've made some friends um, and I've been texting a few people that um, connected with me over social media. And that's the great thing about social media. You get to kind of like meet people and make these connections. And it's really exciting that I will have some people um, close to Alicante where I already kind of know them. And I'm really excited to meet with these people. I know at least one of them listens to the podcast. And if you're listening you know who you are. Hi. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. And I think that this new start is going to be great for me. And yeah, let me shut up. Let me just shut up and start today's topic. But first, a sip of my iced coffee that I was drinking in the last episode because I'm recording many episodes today. And it's very water. It's more water than coffee. But honestly, there's still some caffeine in there. All right, so today's topic is very random. I gotta be honest with you. I, I saw a news article about two weeks ago and I was like, what the hell is this? I have never heard about this in my entire life. Maybe I am like the only person that hasn't heard about this and maybe everybody knows what this is. But it's crazy. Basically, there are these structures appearing around the world. And it's been happening for like, I think it started in 2020. And nobody knows what they are. And I love a good conspiracy theory. I love weird stuff happening all over the world that people can't explain. I personally, I'm going to start off with my, actually, no, I will give you my opinion later on. Let me not ruin the mystery. So you're probably like, Gemma, what the hell are you talking about? I am talking about the mysterious monoliths in Utah, California, and Romania. What random places? Like Utah and California, okay, those are both in the United States, but Romania, like what? So firstly, I need to explain what normal rock monoliths are. So mono means one and lith means rock. So a monolith is like a big rock structure, basically. Those are like normal and those are um, 
naturally formed. But these are weird metallic monoliths that they think are man-made or alien-made, if you believe in aliens. So basically, we're diving into this weird phenomena and yeah, it's these weird monoliths. I just want to talk about them a little bit. And I know it might seem random, but I just think it's super interesting. So basically, the monolith mystery began in November 2020, when this big, shiny metal monolith was discovered in like a super remote area in Utah. We're talking about like the desert, literally the middle of nowhere. Like, even if it is man-made and somebody is just like putting them there, how the fuck? Sorry. <laughs> excuse my language, but how the fuck are they getting this massive monolith into the desert? Like, what truck or what construction, like, what are you using to, like, you guys have, if you're probably, okay, like, I feel like you need to look up, if you are on a Wi-Fi enabled device right now, just Google metal monolith and you'll see what I'm talking about. It is a huge structure. These things are 12, 10 to 12 feet tall. Okay, if you're my European buddies, let's see, 12 feet in meters. We're talking about a big ass piece of metal, which is four meters tall, okay? Like, this is something big. <laughs> Basically, this um, shiny metal monolith was discovered in 2020 in a very remote area in Utah by state wildlife officials. And they were doing like this helicopter survey. So they were flying over, looking down, trying to survey, I don't know, like the rocks or like nature or something. And they just saw this huge 12 foot tall structure embedded in the ground. And of course it quickly became like a viral sensation. Everybody was like, what the hell happened? What is this? And as soon as they started like talking about it, as suddenly as it appeared, it disappeared, you guys. It vanished. This is where it gets interested. And it was reportedly removed by an unknown group. Nobody knows who took it away. So shortly after this Utah monolith discovery, Another monolith or similar monoliths appeared in Romania near an arch ar oh my god I can't even say this word an archaeological site um and then another monolith appeared in Pine Mountain in California so the Utah monolith was discovered by state officials doing this helicopter survey and you know quickly sparked intrigue and speculation and then it was just removed we don't know who took it away the Romania monolith appeared near the Petrodava Dacian Fortress. I'm so sorry for my pronunciation. I don't even know what that means. That one also disappeared, you guys. Like, what? Who is, firstly, who's putting these things here? Why are they doing it? Are they just doing it to mess with us? And then who's taking them away? Like, I don't know if people care about this kind of stuff, but I think it's fascinating. I just, like, I love mysteries and I love, like, natural mysteries as well. And then the Californian monolith was found on this Pine Mountain. And it, you know, it, it attracted considerable attention as well. And then it also disappeared. So, like, this is following a pattern now. We have these big, shiny, crazy things popping up. And then as soon as they're, like, found and talked about, they're disappeared. And that's, I'm sorry, they, they are taken away. That's why I think it's like man-made and I think it's someone messing with us because like as they stay there until they're discovered and then like as soon as they're discovered, they are, you know, taken away. So I think someone is fucking with us. So these monoliths led to a whirlwind of theories, which means like a crazy storm of theories. So here are some theories. Okay, number one, are they art installations? I think that's like the most plausible thing like someone is like okay this is like art and the art is like part of it is making it disappear and causing it sensation is it some type of marketing stunt but I think it was a marketing stunt and what I mean by that is like a company or a business is doing this in order to attract attention 
And then later they will be like, oh, we were doing that because we are going to, I don't know, make a new shoe with metal. And that's why we were putting these metal things in the middle of the desert. But I think if it was a marketing stunt, we would have like heard about it by now because this started in 2020. It's 2024 and they're still finding these things. So I think if it was like a, a marketing thing, like the company would have just admitted it by now. Okay, are they messages from es extraterrestrials? Is it aliens? I mean, do I believe that there is other life in the galaxy? Yes. I mean, our galaxy is huge. And not just our galaxy, but our universe is constantly expanding. It's You can't even fathom, you can't even think about how big the universe is. So, of course, there is a planet with some type of life on it. I honestly think if there were super intelligent aliens, they wouldn't even try to contact us because we're so dumb as a species, probably, compared to them. They would probably look at us and be like, oh, yeah, no, we're good. We don't need to talk to these people. They they just are killing their planet and polluting everything and their politics are all messed up. So I think we'll just stay on our cool planet where, you know, we have like mind reading technology or something so i don't really think aliens would even try to be friends with us because we kind of are the worst um as humanity um now a group called the most famous artist actually later suggested that they were behind at least some of the monoliths calling them monolith stunt art however the true origins and intentions still remain partly speculative because they said like they did some of them but they didn't do all of them so is there like a copycat is there someone or a, a bunch of people who are artists who are like copying this performance art i think that like the you know the most plausible explanation is that it's art that's what i believe you can tell me in the comments what what do you think it is and please google a picture of metal monolith and you'll see what i'm talking about and then tell me what you think is the most plausible explanation so let's talk about other strange phenomena um i love things like crop circles and stuff like that so let's just have a quick chat about other things that are kind of similar to monoliths so obviously monoliths are not the first strange weird things to capture people's um attention there are a lot of other weird occurrences so yeah like i just said the first one is crop circles um basically crop circles have been reported for decades like i think literally since the 1920s or maybe even earlier but basically crops are wheat corn in a big field and a crop circle is an intricate pattern that they just appear overnight in a field of crops. And they're basically like, imagine like crops, like long, tall grass, and then somebody cuts a perfect pattern into the crop. And so when you look at it from above, it and they're huge, they're huge. They're normally circular, obviously crop circles, but they have these crazy different patterns and they look, they look very alien. Like they don't look like they're made by humans, but I, I do think it's humans just messing with us again. But basically, um, crop circles gained a lot of attention. They were very, very popular in the 1980s and 1990s. Um, some theories about it are explanations like hoaxes, basically people just, you know, playing with us, playing a prank. A lot of people think that it happens naturally. I don't really understand this explanation. Like the weather causes it, but I'm sorry. If you look at a picture of a crop circle, there's no way that that's natural in my opinion. And then some people are saying it's animals, like animal activity is causing them. I also think that's bullshit. And the most commonly, you know, accepted um, idea or like explanation is messages from extraterrestrials so aliens um i mean they do look like they come from spaceships but i again like i said i don't think if there were aliens that they would even try to contact us because we're stupid <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think if aliens did exist and they looked at us would they be like yes let's be friends with these humans i don't think so 
Um, many crop circles have um, been admitted to be the work of human artists. So again, I think this is humans just, this is what we do as humans. We like to make art and we also like to prank each other and, you know, we like to create mysteries and stimulate the imagination of other humans. So, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff, it's just humans being humans and making weird things to confuse other humans. And I think it's so funny, like the human species, like there are so many problems going on in the world and we're like, hmm, let's make a weird thing to distract the other humans from what's really going on. And let's like just make weird art in the middle of the desert. I don't know. Humans are cute. But also, we're kind of stupid as a species. I'm not saying you're stupid or I'm stupid or, like, the individual is stupid. I'm saying, like, humans in general are stupid. Like, how are we still fighting wars and killing each other? And, like, we are so intelligent and we're so evolved as a species. But we are so stupid at the same time. Like, we do things that don't make sense. The fact that, like, racism and homophobia and things like this still exist in 2024 with all of the information and education that we have as a species, and we still choose hate, we still choose violence, it's like we are not evolved at all. That's why I say humanity is stupid. I don't think you're stupid. I think you're smart. And you're especially smart for wanting to improve your English and listen to a weird girl like me talking about these topics on my podcast. The next weird thing is the wow signal. I've never heard about this before. I found this online. In 1977, a strong narrow band radio signal was received by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University. This was named the wow signal after a researcher wrote wow next to the data. It lasted 72 seconds and it has never been detected since. Weird. So possible explanations include a natural astronomical event, earth-based interference, so like earth radio signals just like weirdly interfering, or an alien transmission. Again, would the aliens even use 72 seconds of their precious time to try to contact us? I don't think so. Despite numerous attempts, the signal has never been replicated, leaving its origin a mystery. So this has never, from since 1977, it's never been explained. I love stuff like that. The next one is the ta Taos. I don't, I don't actually know how to pronounce this. Taos? T-A-O-S, the Taos hum. Residents of Taos, New Mexico, have reported, oh my God, I've heard about this. I have heard about this and it's crazy. It blows my mind. They've reported hearing a low frequency hum. And by the way, a hum is like, mm, like that. They've been hearing this hum since the early 1990s. The hum is often described as a distant kind of diesel engine idling. So you know when you have like a big truck and it makes that like noise when it's just in neutral or whatever? It, it sounds like that. So what are the theories? Um, some of them include industrial equipment. So like big machines that are, I don't know, people can hear them in the background. High pressure gas lines that are underground that cause these low frequency vibrations. Or... <laughs> tinnitus tinnitus is a, a condition that happens inside your ear which causes this constant noise in your ear which is a hum like all the time in your ear my dad actually has tinnitus um and apparently it's horrible you just constantly hear sound in your um ear but i don't think that like that makes sense because why would multiple residents of the same town all have tinnitus like they all have the same medical condition i just think that's like kind of random so yeah the source remains unidentified they've never found the source of this hum and not everyone in the town hears the hum but like the majority of people do so it's got to be something like industrial equipment or something that's close to the town it has to be like a thing an object causing this you know so, let's explore a few 
other possible explanations for these types of phenomena. While each event is unique, they often share common themes that can kind of help us understand their origins. So I think the most common is art and hoaxes. A hoax is like a prank, like something that people do to like trick other people. So many strange phenomena like the monoliths and the crop circles have been attributed to human creativity. Like I said, humans just making art. Artists and pranksters, pranksters are people that pull pranks, tricks on other people. So pranksters often create these installations to provoke thought, entertain, or simply gain attention. You know, a lot of this stuff gets covered by the news and it gets reported. And I think people just like the attention sometimes. Um, another explanation is just natural phenomena. Some unexplained occurrences can be attributed to natural causes. So, for example, weird weather patterns, seismic activity, which is, I, I believe is like earthquakes and volcanoes or maybe just earthquakes. Um, animal behavior can sometimes create these mysterious effects. And then again, like there's this there's this explanation, which is just psychological factors. So our perception as humans, our perception of reality and our thought processes can sometimes create our own reality. So I think our perception can often play a significant role in the phenomena, like expectation of what it is, suggestion and mass hysteria can lead people to believe in strange occurrences like mass hysteria means like um when a lot of people are freaking out basically when everybody's like oh my god it's aliens then it's like my neighbor said it was an alien and the news is saying it's an alien so it has to be an alien there's no other explanation you know like so people can sometimes create these things in their head the taos hum for instance I think maybe partly psychological with some people that are like more sensitive to certain frequencies or, you know, because it's, it's isolated in a town where everybody's like, yeah, I hear it too. And then even if you don't really hear it, you can think that you're hearing it because everyone else says they're hearing it. Oh my God. Like a really good example of this is the other day, um, I was in the grocery store with my mom and we smelled gas really strongly. We smelled gas and we were like, oh my God, is there a gas leak? And like nobody else in the store seemed like they were acting weird. But I'm telling you, it literally smelled like, you know, when you go to the gas station, the petrol station to fill up your car and it stinks of gas. It smelled like that in the grocery store so strongly. And me and my mom just freaked out and we actually left <laughs> because we thought that there was like going to be a gas leak. It was so crazy. Like, I didn't feel safe there and it it's I cannot explain to you how I've never smelled gas that strongly before. So me and my mom looked at each other and we were like, let's just go to a different grocery store. So we left. And then the other day I was in the house in the house that I'm staying at right now where I'm dog sitting and I was cooking and they have a gas stove and I had cooked and I had finished cooking and I, I could smell gas. And I was like, oh my God, is there gas leaking from the oven? And I was freaking out. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I kept smelling gas, kept smelling gas. And then I like was like, okay, the oven is definitely off. There's no gas. And then I stopped smelling the gas. Once I told myself like the gas is definitely off, I couldn't smell the gas anymore. And I genuinely think I like tricked my brain into smelling gas, even though it wasn't there because I had just recently had that like weird experience with my mom. My brain was like, okay, now there's gas again. Do you know what I mean? Like I genuinely think my brain like made me smell gas, even though it wasn't there. Maybe you're listening to me and you think I'm crazy, but like, I swear sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking that things are happening that aren't really happening. And our brains are so powerful that they can create smells. They can create sensations. They can even, there was an episode of this medical show where people were told, it, the placebo effect, where people were told that they were sick and that they were receiving chemo um, treatment they were actually receiving a sugar pill. There was nothing in it. But because their brain thought that their hair was going to fall out from the chemo treatment, their hair started falling out. Even though they weren't receiving the treatment, they were just receiving a sugar pill, a placebo pill, because their brains 
had this preconception of I'm getting chemo treatment and my hair is going to fall out, their brain made their hair fall out. Like their hair actually started falling out. And I know this is like most people know that this is how the brain works, but I find it fascinating. Anyways, sorry, I went on a tangent. (laughs) Um, So yeah, a lot of people think that this Taos hum, this town in New Mexico where they're hearing this mm sound, um, it's just psychological. And then our last one is extraterrestrial hypotheses, which is, you know, it's often dismissed by the scientific community, the idea of aliens involvement um, in these things. Um, But, you know, I think when the evidence remains elusive, it keeps these theories, the possibilities alive. You know, you the mystery is alive. You never know. Like, it could be aliens, you know? So I... I'm just fascinated in these types of things, any type of like mystery or conspiracy theories. You know, I take everything with a pinch of salt, which means I'm skeptical about what I hear. And I try to look at the evidence and the facts and I don't believe in things that don't have any proof, but I just find them interesting. I just like to read about them and, you know, just find them very interesting. So whether these things are art, natural, psychological, or something even crazier like aliens, I think these mysterious occurrences remind us of the world's wonder and complexity. There are so many things that we don't understand. We don't know how things really work. And I think that it's just cool to to not know things. I think not knowing and staying curious is really important in order to have a well-rounded experience of life and to admit your ignorance like just be like you know what I don't know like there's a lot of things that I don't know how it works and I like not knowing because it makes me curious to know more so yeah these monoliths crop circles things like the wow signal the hum They all challenge us to think critically and creatively about the unknown. They challenge us to learn more. And maybe not everybody is interested in this kind of thing, but I certainly am. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on the podcast and or on YouTube. And let me know if you've heard of any weird news or if there's some natural phenomena that you would like me to cover because I love talking about these types of topics. So please, if there's anything weird that's ever happened in your country that has never been explained, um, let me know. I would love to cover it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.